So we've got here an example problem from my notes. It's very similar to the demonstration I just showed in the last video. Um, we have a meter stick in this case, which is balanced on a little support with a weight hanging from each end. And the two different uh, weights on either end have different masses. And also the meter stick itself has a mass. And uh, you know, unlike the wooden spoon I was using, the meter stick will assume is uniform and its center of mass is in the middle. Um, so I've, I've sketched the situation already here. So now where do we begin trying to solve this problem? And um, hopefully when I say, where do we begin? By this point in the course, something should pop into your mind instantly. And that should be, we probably need to begin with free body diagrams, which is indeed correct. So um, we need some free body diagrams here. Let me just do one quick little side calculation which you don't necessarily need to do every time you solve one of these problems, but I wanna at least um, kind of show it once. Um, how are you gonna handle these little blocks on the side? Um, so let's say you were to free body diagram, forget about the meter stick for a second, which is our main focus. Let's say we think about diagramming one of these little blocks on the side. We're going to have the weight of the block going down and we're going to have the tension of the block going up. I mean, the tension in the string that's holding it going up. So we'll have here Mg pulling down. We'll have here a tension force pulling up. Um, and the fact that this block is at static equilibrium means that if we sum the forces on the block, T minus Mg equals Ma, but then that's equal to zero. So T minus Mg equals zero, which means T equals Mg. And because the system is not accelerating, we get the result that the rope is simply um, pulling down with the same force as the weight of the block, which is not necessarily always the case. If it's accelerating, that's not the case. You start to get into these situations where the apparent weight of the block is not equal to the weight of the block and all that type of stuff. But that's not the case in static equilibrium. Um, so uh, we know that the tension is going to be equal to the object's weight. Now that's important because we don't really care about the block. What we really care about is what force is the block exerting downwards on the meter stick. And the, the technically correct answer to that question is that this is really the tension force in that string that's pulling downwards. Um, but as we just showed, that tension force is simply gonna be equal to mg of the block. So once you realize that, um, you can sort of skip a step or two here and just say that that uh, force is gonna be mg in a static equilibrium case. And there's also gonna be an mg pulling down over here based on the weight of this block. And since we have multiple masses here, we may want to um, give these names. Let's call this guy M1 and we'll call this guy M2 because I'm going to assume that this guy is the 0 0.1 kilogram and this guy will be the 0 0.2 kilogram because I presume the 0 0.2 kilogram will be closer to the support, although you don't necessarily have to know that going in. Don't forget also that the meter stick itself has some weight, and that weight is gonna be acting in the center, the exact center because it's uniform. So we're gonna have here the mass of the stick times G, where that is this 0 0.15, this given here. Um, then lastly, the thing is sitting on top of this support. So the support is going to be exerting an upward force there Basically, this is gonna be, a, you can call it a normal force if you like, normal force of the support pushing upwards on the meter stick. So those are my four forces acting on the meter stick. Let me also create a couple of variable names here. Um, I'm gonna say that the distance between the left end of the stick and the support, we'll call that X. And then I also know, by the way, the distance between the end and the middle is 0 
and I know that the distance between the two ends is one because this is a meter stick. So the whole length is one, the half length is 0.5, and the distance just from the support to the end, that's what we're trying to solve for. That's going to be our variable x. Okay. So I've gotten organized, I have a diagram, now I can actually start trying to solve for things. So step one in this problem, well, I mean, there's a number of different places you could start, but step one, let's start with the easiest thing you can write down, which is F equals MA. So F equals MA is practically a gimme for these problems compared to having to calculate the torques and all that nonsense. Um, so we want the sum of the forces to equal MA, which equals zero. Now, when you sum the forces in these problems, don't get bogged down with unnecessary complexity because when we sum the forces, these are just good old fashioned forces. Up means positive, down means negative. You don't need to worry about where they're actually located on the object. So summing the forces is just simply gonna be positive FN because FN is pointing upward, negative M2G because that's pointing downwards, negative MSG because that's pointing downwards, negative M1G because that's pointing downward. If you sum all those, you get zero. So that tells me a result which, when you think about it, is really not that surprising. It tells me that the value of the force that the support has to exert to hold this whole thing up is simply equal to the weight of everything that it's holding up because there's only one support holding this thing up. So what this equation here is telling me is that the support has to bear all the weight because it's holding up the entire thing, which is, is pretty obvious when you think about it. If you wanna actually calculate this numerically, um, we've got here M2 is 0.2, so we'd have 0 0.2, I'm gonna factor out the G. We've got 0 0.2 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1 all times 9.8. And that would be equal to, so that's 0 0.45 times 9.8, if I'm doing my mental math correctly. So that's 4.41 newtons, okay? Make sense? So we know that the value, the magnitude of the normal force is 4.41 newtons. And I wanted to write that off to the side because I'm gonna need all this space. So I'm gonna erase all this. The magic of doing recordings here, if I erase it too fast for you, you can just rewind the video. Oops, we're gonna need that though. All right. Next up, we've got the sum of the forces. So next we need the sum of the torques. So step two, sum of the torques on this object is equal to I alpha, which also equals to zero. All right. Now, one thing I really wanna emphasize, so listen up to this point, because this I think is the, is the most non-obvious part of this whole process. In order for a torque equation to make any sense, you must have an axis of rotation. So step one here of calculating torques, we can't do anything until we say, what is the axis of rotation about which we are calculating these torques? Again, in static equilibrium problems, there's not one unique axis that every student has to choose. You'll get the right answer no matter where you place your axis of rotation, as long as you know where you placed it and you do that consistently for the entire problem. Of course, in terms of like a test question, I could ask you to put the axis of rotation in a specific location and tell me what the equation is based on a certain axis of rotation. Um, so the most obvious choice, mo what most people would probably do is put the axis of rotation here at the location of the support because that would actually be the axis of rotation if it did start moving. Um, so if that's my axis of rotation, the first thing I'll make note of is the direction of all the torques. Okay, so first of all, the torque from the normal force is going to be zero because I place the axis of rotation at the location of the normal force, so L equals zero. 
This M2G, that's gonna cause a counterclockwise rotation, so that's positive. MSG is gonna cause a clockwise rotation, so that's negative. And M1G is a clockwise rotation, so that's negative. Okay, so we've got T2 is positive. TS is negative. T1 is negative. Okay, now in each of these cases, um, the force is already tangential, so you can just put in the whole magnitude of the force. You don't need to worry about vector components. So that's one nice thing. So we'll just put in the force. Then lastly, we need the lever arm, the leverage for each one of these guys, the L value. Um, so that, remember, is always going to be the distance from the axis to where the force is acting. So for T2, it's gonna be this distance here from the axis to force M2G. And you can see in the picture, that's X. So this guy is X. That one's easy. Next up, for MSG. Now this is where things get a little bit trickier. Maybe I'll try some different colors here so that you can follow my pen strokes a bit easier. We want this distance here, that green circle distance, from the axis of rotation to the location where MSG is located. Now, that's not labeled in the diagram. So what is it? What do I plug in there? You're gonna have to do a little bit of kind of mental geometry here. I know that this distance is 0.5, and I know that this distance is x. So that means the distance, the, the unknown distance there is going to be 0 0.5 minus x. Can you see that in the picture? Because x plus the unknown distance has to equal 0 0.5. So that means the unknown distance is 0 0.5 minus x. Then by the same argument, for the third one, the distance I want is this distance here that I'm circling in pink. So it's all the way from the axis to M1G. And down here, the whole thing has to be one meter. And this is X. So the circled pink distance is going to be one minus X. So those distances might be a little bit counterintuitive to figure out, um, but you can just read them. What I would say is, my advice is, read them off of the picture. If you go by the picture, don't try to think in terms of equations and numbers and variables. Just look at the picture and say, okay, where in the picture is the actual distance that I'm looking for? And, and just see if you can eyeball out, like what is that distance? Because um, how is it related to the things that I've labeled in the picture, if you have good labels in your picture? Okay, so once you get all those torques, then all I have to do is sum the torques. So M2GX minus MSG times, I'm gonna drop the units at this point to make my life a little bit easier. M1G times one minus X. So the, this equals zero. If I add up my three torques that way, um, let me distribute these negative signs through. This is, there's going to be a little bit of tedious algebra here, which if you don't want to see the algebra, you can skip ahead a little bit. So this is MSG. Let me try to write this more neatly. So it's going to be 0 0.5 MSG. Uh, then we have a negative times a negative is a positive. MSGX, then we've got negative M1G, then we've got positive M1GX equals zero. Uh, I can divide this whole equation by, by G and cancel all these Gs out. You can plug in the G if you want to, but I'm just saving myself a little bit of algebra. And then uh, let me group all my Xs together and group all my terms without an X together. 
So my X terms, I've got M plus M2, and I've got plus MS, and I've got plus M1. So I've got M2 plus MS plus M1 times X, and then I've got minus 0 0.5 MS, um, minus M1. Okay. And that all equals zero. So then that means my X value is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1 MS is 0 0.15, M1 is 0.1, M2 is 0.2. So here will be 0.2 plus 0.15. That says 0.15 plus 0.1. So that gives me 0.5 times 0.15 plus 0.1. Whole thing divide by... 0.45 and I got 0 0.39 meters and is it correct let me check my notes uh, in my notes I did it the opposite way but yes corresponds to the same answer so um, it's a little bit of work to solve a problem like this um, but, you know, it's a real test of whether you absorb uh, what we learned over the last quite a number of lessons because you had to do a little bit of everything in a problem like this. So just go through the steps of solving an F equals MA problem and solving a tau equals I alpha problem um, and uh, just break it down step by step. That's the real key. Um, Think about each step separately. Each step is manageable.